We come to worship the Lord. We come to lift our voices in praise. We come and seek his presence. We read in Isaiah 26 and the first four verses these words. We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. Trust in the Lord forever. He is the rock eternal. We can stand on that rock. We are surrounded by our faithful God this morning as we stand and sing our opening song. As we continue in worship all the way through the meeting, we can know the presence, the peace and the grace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We stand and sing, Lord, I come before your throne of grace. Therefore, since we have justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Amen. For that is blessing to those words. Thank you, Colin.
we were going to sing at this point, but the song actually interrupts the flow of what the Lord's already been doing this morning. You see, from the singing company, through the songsters, through the band, we've not only heard of God's peace, we've experienced God's peace, we've experienced the presence of the God who gives us peace. And to sing a song that makes us all lively and jumping up and down again would interrupt that flow of peace. We come this morning to the next in our series on Romans. <coughs> and as we come there, we come and we come to a, almost a, a, a resting point in our looking at Romans. There are lots of places I would love to live. Here's a list of them. Great snoring, <laughs> crackpot, nasty, pity me, loose bottom, <laughs> donkey town, wig wig, and wide open. All of them are real places. Wouldn't it be just brilliant to have on your epaulets pity me or crackpot? <laughs> Can you imagine the in-gathering they would have? We welcome the call from Wide Open! Hello! But one place I would love to live is a place called Rest and Be Thankful. It's a place in Scotland. You can see it on a map. You can see that place on a map. Rest and be thankful. The people who built the military road got to a point where they rest and be thankful. And in this part of Romans, we come to a point where we say, rest and be thankful. Paul wants us just to come to a resting point, to look at the view, to look how far we've come, and just take it all in, soak it all in. Paul says, thus far, We've looked at salvation, that you can be saved, that you can have a relationship with the living God through his son, Jesus Christ. And not only that, can you be saved, you can be justified, you can be put right with God. It's just if I'd never sinned. And you can stand free, forgiven and justified in the presence of God. But that justification isn't all there is because of what Christ has done I'm saved I'm justified and I have peace and Paul says let's just look at that peace and enjoy that peace for the moment you see that peace helps us in trials that peace helps us in difficulty that peace is something we can live out in our daily lives it impacts how we live. It impacts the very nature of our lives. And so we rest and we're thankful from this viewpoint. You know, Paul is a big fan of peace. Paul, who wrote the letter to the Romans, the letter that Phoebe delivered to them, he was a big fan of peace because he starts so many of his letters with this greeting. Grace and peace to you from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And in his letter to the church in Philippi, he writes in 4.7, the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Friends, this morning we have known the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Because when the singing company stopped singing, Nobody moved, nobody spoke, nobody shuffled or read their songbook or went to their phone. When the songsters sang and they ended, nobody moved, nobody breathed, nobody sat wondering, I wonder what's for lunch. We knew something of the peace of God and there was the same after the band peace. Let's never be in doubt that the peace of God is something present. You see, the peace of God isn't something ethereal and theoretical. It's something real to be experienced and known and treasured and enjoyed. 
What is the peace of God? It's a calmness of heart and spirit that transcends any of our circumstances. Len Griggs sat through there and knew the peace of God. And the medics came and helped him. One of the band this morning has had a bit of a family thing going on, some illness. But sits in the band knowing the peace of God. St. Paul wasn't just a fan of peace and talking about that. He was a fan of gram grammar. That's like how you speak and the words you use, not the one that's married to your granddad. <laughs> and it's surprising that he was a fan of peace because actually he was living in strange times. He was living under the Pax Romano. Doesn't sound very good, does it? The peace of Rome. And the peace of Rome was brilliant because the peace of Rome and said, we will bring peace by killing you. We will bring peace by subjugating you. We will bring peace by threatening you. Doesn't sound very good, does it? Not the kind of peace I would want. And the folk that Paul was writing to in Rome, they knew the Pax Romano as slaves, as citizens. They were sitting under it. Here, have peace. And they were under the foot, under the cosh, under the glove, under the sword. But Paul was saying, there is peace from God. And like I say, he was very, very keen on grammar. Because if we read that first verse, we read that you have been justified, past tense. And now you have peace, ongoing. I say that again. You have been justified which is a past thing, you have peace, which is now a present thing. And that's important. That's not me being flash and clever, because I ain't flash and clever. It's something really important. You can know peace in the present by what Christ has done in the past. I have been justified and put right with God, and now I have peace. You see, we know that salvation can't be earned. We know that justification is a gift. It's not a wage that we earn from God. It's not something that we put anything into. It's all by grace. You see, if our peace depended on what we could earn, it wouldn't last very long. If our peace depended on what we could put into it, it would be fleeting. Imagine the kind of God that you would worship if it depended on how much I sucked up to him. Imagine the kind of God you would worship if you didn't know that you were put right with him. You'd always be on the back foot thinking, I need to work harder and I need to earn this more. I need to do more and more and more and more. What happens if I don't do that? He's going to send a thunderbolt. Can I make him love me anymore? Can I do... You'd never have peace. But we have been justified by God through faith. We have been put right with God by our Lord Jesus Christ through his death and resurrection. And now I can have peace. See, I, I don't need to worry. I, I don't need to worry that I have to impress God more or do more for him. I have been put right with God through Jesus Christ. I've been to a couple of garden parties now and again, royal garden parties. I, I managed to sneak in over the wall. And, um, no, we got invites, honestly. Uh, they vet you and everything, it's, it's fine. Um, and, and then the Queen came to Aberdeen, and I was in the lineup. And, and there was the rabbi, and a couple of Church of Scotland ministers, and Pentecostal minister, and me. And she's coming down the line, and she was a very little, tiny lady. She, she really was. Iris, you, you would be tall compared to the Queen. <laughs> and she comes along, and, and they say to you, say, Mom, not Mam, because where I come from, that's my mother. Don't say Mam, say Mom, and sort of bow. And I've got this her horrible feeling that what happens, do you see that episode of Mr. Bean where he meets the Queen? And he bows, and he nuts the Queen. <laughs> so I, I'm like, shaking hands with David Alton from Workington in Cumbria. 
he's, he's with the Queen. She's been Queen for like so many years. She's seen millions of prime ministers and presidents and, and influential people. And some oik from West Cumbria has now shaken the hands of the Queen. What a privilege. Think about it for a second. The monarch of all, the sovereign of all, you know his presence, you know his love, you know his grace. You're standing a bit taller, you're sitting a bit taller now, aren't you? Because you know the presence of God. You know that you've been forgiven and put right. God is not like a judge in a court who says, okay, you're forgiven, away you go, I never want to see you again. God says, you're forgiven, and I want to live with you, and I want to walk with you, and I want to be with you. That's what Jesus' name means, God with us. He wants us to know peace, and that peace comes not only from our justification, our forgiveness, but by his presence. You see, whatever we go through, whatever we face, we can know that peace, a peace that passes all understanding. And as I stand up here in, in six foot above contradiction, I can look down and I can look at people who have and are facing trial and challenge. I can look at people who are facing difficulty and heartache. I can look at people who are experiencing joy and hope. What does that come from? Where does all of that resource come from? Where does that strength come from? It comes from the peace of God that passes all understanding. We can have peace. We can know peace. How can we know peace? Well, we read that the Holy Spirit has been poured into our hearts and he has been given to us. The end of that reading tells us that. Being married, oh, don't get me started, we haven't got enough time and, and, and Trevor needs his lunch so we need to be short. I know I'm married because I've got my wedding certificate in the file. But that isn't enough. That is an objective fact, I've got a piece of paper that says I'm married. But there's also the subjective experience of that love that relationship that we have every day. Friends, you can know the love of God every day and his grace and his peace. What was it we heard late, earlier? We also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Whatever we're going through, we can know the peace of God and we can persevere. And, and that isn't just airy-fairy talk that belongs more to Disney than anywhere else. That's a reality. It has been gifted to us. You see, I can know my justification theoretically. That's the wedding certificate but I can know my justification, my salvation, and my peace because I've also got the ongoing experience. And I want you to know this, this morning about that ongoing experience. Without that experience, we might slide into bitterness when things get tough. Without that experience, we might get envious when we see everybody else is having a much better life than me. Without that experience, we could have a lot of negative feelings. But with that knowledge and that awareness of peace, with that experience of peace, comes something deep that the world cannot take away. And I pray this morning that you would know that. And as you go away this morning, there's three things I want you to do. One, well, if you go away this morning and you've not got that peace, I want you to come and see me after the meeting come and say Jane and we want to pray with you about that peace the second thing if you do know that peace this morning how about doing something for me how about writing down your testimony it won't take you long because you know the story and just think about where you found peace in trial and challenge 
and the third thing. The third thing is rest and be thankful. To actually take the time to sit down and just praise God. Just look at the view of how far you've come and where you're at and give thanks to God. He has saved me. He has justified me. He's living in my heart. I have the power and peace of the Holy Spirit. I rest and I'm thankful. Three things. Just three things. And as, Peter, as, as Paul said, may the peace of God that passes all understanding be in your hearts <coughs> and your minds. In the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Should we sing our closing song? <coughs> yeah, let's. Let's praise God as a people of peace and hope. Let's praise God as a people of faith. Oh, Jane's just reminded me. Um, we went to the ICO on Friday and um, we close every session teaching day that we do at the ICO with the same song. It is well with my soul. And an officer stood before us called Galina. Galina is a Ukrainian Salvation Army officer. Oh, I'm getting emotional. And she sang, It is well with my soul. And her husband, a Salvation Army officer, has willingly been conscripted into the Ukrainian army and is now fighting somewhere for his country and for his freedom. And that lady, she was given it plenty when she sang, it is well, it is well with my soul. And so as we sing this morning a different song, the same song, sorry, the same song, as we sing the same song, that's not the song we're singing for a start, is it? Yes, 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 yeah, sorry. As we sing, sorry. <laughs> Do you remember Ray Charles and no, Lord Charles, and was it, the, 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 the ventriloquist dummy? Just stick your hand up the back of my tunic, darling, and carry on. <laughs> See, what I'm trying to say to you is this. That lady could sing that and have peace. That lady could sing that and say, it is well with my soul. I pray that we would all be able to do that this morning. But if we can't, please come and find us and speak to us and pray with us. But let's stand and sing this together after I've made a mess of it.
Jesus, we make that proclamation and declaration. It is well with our soul. It is well because we know your presence and your peace, your love and for your, your forgiveness. Send us out into the world, conscious of that peace. Help us to know and experience that peace where we are and how we live. And may we share it with those around us that they too would know the peace that passes all understanding. Lord Jesus, go with us through your Holy Spirit. Bless us, we pray. For we ask it in your precious name. Amen.